Hey there, fellow grad students. Do you have a test coming up on Alzheimer's disease? I am a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, and I have about 15 questions to get you ready for your upcoming test. Ready? Let's learn psych fast. Question one. For which patient must the drug Dinepazel for Alzheimer's disease be avoided? A. 54-year-old woman with early onset Alzheimer's disease. B. 67-year-old man who also takes diabetes. Diabetes medication. C. A 72 year old woman who is 20 pounds underweight. Or D. A 72 year old man who is unable to sit or stand. The answer is C. 72 year old woman who is 20 pounds underweight. So, Dinepazel suppresses appetite and can cause weight loss. In a person who is underweight, the usual dosage can lead to toxicity. In addition, some Alzheimer's patients forget to eat and are already underweight. So weighing in less than an ideal body weight increases the risk for many complications of old age and poor health. Question 2. When asked about the prognosis for a patient diagnosed with dementia secondary to normal pressure hydrocephalus, you replied, A. Unfortunately, the prognosis for a is for a downhill course ending in death. B. There will be good days and bad days for the rest of the patient's life. C. The symptoms generally remit after a shunt is inserted to drain fluid. Or D. We'll try our very best, but only time will tell how successful we are. The answer is C. The symptoms generally remit after a shunt is inserted to drain the fluid. By relieving the cause, the symptoms of secondary dementias are largely reversible. The statements reflected in the other options do not reflect this fact. Question 3. A patient has been diagnosed with memory dysfunction associated with Alzheimer's disease. Which part of the patient's brain includes deterioration of temporal lobe structures and nerves of which of the following? A. Basal ganglia? B. Limbic system, C. Frontal lobe, or D. Or D. Hippocampus. The answer is D. Hippocampus. The hippocampus is a significant component of the limbic lobe. It is a crucial region for learning and memory, and its subregions aid in the generation of episodic memory. However, the hippocampus is one of the brain areas affected by Alzheimer's. So, in the early stages of AD, the hippocampus shows rapid loss of the tissue, which is associated with the functional disconnection with other parts of the brain. In the progression of AD, Alzheimer's, atrophy of the medial, temporal, and hippocampal regions are structural markers that are seen on MRI. Question 4. A patient has been diagnosed with dementia secondary to cerebral disease. The family members have noted the patient has not been as sharp as he once was and that he has developed urinary incontinence and a gait disturbance. Which pathophysiology can cause such a symptom? A. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. B. Vitamin B12 deficiency. C. Hepatic disease. Or D. Tuberculosis. The answer is A. Normal pressure hydrocephalus is a disorder characterized by dementia, gait disturbance, and urinary incontinence. The dilation of ventricles and the absence of increased CFS is a prominent manifestation. Early urinary incontinence is not really seen in disorders listed in the other options. Question 5. When asked about the prognosis for a patient diagnosed with dementia secondary to normal pressure hydrocephalus, you replied, a. Unfortunately, the prognosis is for a downhill course ending in death. B. There will be some good days and some bad days for the rest of the patient's life. C. The symptoms generally remit after a shunt is inserted to drain fluid. D. Well, we'll just try our very best, but only time will tell how successful we are. The answer is C. The symptoms of secondary dementia generally will remit after a shunt is inserted to drain the fluid. Question 6. 
Patient with Alzheimer's has taken rivastigmine and develops an allergic reaction and is treated with Benadryl. What occurs when a cholinesterase inhibitor is combined with an anticholinergic agent? Is it A, the therapeutic effect of the cholinesterase inhibitor is reduced, B, the therapeutic effect of the cholinesterase inhibitor is increased, or is it C, the combination can lead to excessive cholinergic responses, including blurred vision, urinary retention, constipation, and tachycardia, or D, the combo is not a problem. The answer is B, reduced. The therapeutic effect of the cholinesterase inhibitor is reduced. Question 7. Which symptom is often the earliest to occur in a patient with Alzheimer's disease? Is it A, difficulty solving math problems? B, problems performing simple tasks? C, mind forgetfulness? Or D, inability to read? The answer is C, mild forgetfulness. In Alzheimer's disease, symptoms begin very slowly. In the early stage, the first symptom is mild forgetfulness, which is sometimes confused with age-related memory changes. Question 8. Which statement made by a patient with Alzheimer's disease indicates you need to provide additional teaching? Is it A, when I've been taking Dinepazil for six weeks, I should regain my memories? Or B, the only way to be sure I have Alzheimer's disease is by autopsy after I die. Or C, even with medication, eventually I will need total care to prevent complications. Or is it D, the rivastigmine I'm taking will slow down the progression of my symptoms? The answer is A, when I've been taking Dinepazil for six weeks, I should regain my memories. There's no drug that has been developed that will protect neurons from the changes that occur with Alzheimer's disease. Drug treatments can temporarily slow the progression of symptoms in some patients. The drugs do not cure the disease, and a patient should not expect to regain lost function. The only way to definitively diagnose this illness is by seeing the plaques and tangles in the brain on autopsy after death. Question 9. Which is the common underlying pathophysiology of both Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease? Is it A, both are neurodegenerative diseases, B, both are forms of dementia, C, both involve interrupted transmission of nerve impulses, or D, both are primarily caused and directly related to environmental factors? The answer is C. Both involve interrupted transmission of nerve impulses. So with Alzheimer's disease, you know, it's a form of dementia. Parkinson's disease is a form of neurodegenerative disease. But both illnesses involve interrupted nerve impulse transmission. Question 10. Which symptom is often the earliest to occur in patients with Alzheimer's disease? Is it A. Difficulty solving simple math problems? B problems performing simple tasks, C, mild forgetfulness, or D, inability to read? The answer is C, mild forgetfulness. With Alzheimer's disease, the symptoms begin very slowly. In the early stage, the first symptom is mild forgetfulness, which is sometimes confused with age-related changes to the memory. Question 11. Depression is comorbid in up to what percentage of people with Alzheimer's disease? Is it A, 10%, B, 50%, or C, 75%? The answer is B. It's in up to 50% of people with Alzheimer's disease or dementia that depression is comorbid. Question 12. For which patient must the drug Dinepazil for Alzheimer's disease be avoided in? Is it A, a 54-year-old woman with early-onset Alzheimer's disease, B, 67-year-old man who also takes drugs for diabetes. C, 72-year-old woman who is 20 pounds underweight. Or D, a 72-year-old man who is unable to sit or stand. The answer is C, a 72-year-old woman who is 20 pounds underweight. So why is that? Well, Dinepazil, it suppresses appetite and can cause weight loss. 
in a person who is underweight, the usual dose can lead to toxicity, so it might have to be modified. You've got to watch for that. In addition, some patients with Alzheimer's disease, they forget to eat and they're already underweight. So gosh, again, watch for the weight. So weighing less than an ideal body weight increases the risk for many complications of old age and poor health. Question 13. Which is the most established risk factor for AD? Is it A, vascular factors, B, consumption of two or more caffeinated beverages a day, C, hypertension, or D, traumatic brain injury? The answer is C, hypertension. Midlife hypertension is an established risk factor for late onset dementia. A brain autopsy study evaluating the link between hypertension and Alzheimer's disease was found that patients using beta blockers to control blood pressure had fewer Alzheimer's type brain lesions on autopsy compared to patients that were not taking the beta blocker. Question 14. Onset of disassociative amnesia is reported during blank and childhood. What's the blank? A. Preadolescence. B early adolescence, or C, late adolescence? The answer is C, late adolescence. Cases generally begin to be reported in late adolescence and adulthood. Question 15. Approximately blank of older adults with dementia are prescribed three or more CNS-activated medications. Is the blank A, 7%, B, 14%, or C, 33%? The answer is B, 14%. CNS activating polypharmacy occurred in about 14% of these community-dwelling older adults in a study that had dementia but also received CNS activating polypharmacy agents such as a combination of multiple psychotropics and opioid medications and they were taking them for more than 30 days. Question 16. What are amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's disease? Is it A, clumps of protein in the brain? B, a type of bacteria that causes an infection, C, a type of virus that causes illness, or D, a type of medication used to treat dementia? The answer is A, clumps of protein in the brain. So amyloid plaques, these are clumps of protein that are in the brain, and they're believed to play a role in the development of Alzheimer's disease. You know, these plaques, you know, they're formed when a protein called a beta amyloid accumulates and clumps together in the brain. Question 17. Which of the following best reflects the evidence on the side effects in the first year of giving denepazil to a patient with Alzheimer's? A. In a randomized controlled trial with one-year follow-up, denepazil caused severe vomiting, nausea, and diarrhea, which is the reason why a large portion of patients withdrew from the drug because of these side effects. Or is it B. The side effects in a randomized controlled trial were severe and persistent, but only a small portion of patients withdrew from the drug. Or is it option C? The side effects in a randomized controlled trial were generally mild and transient, and in a systematic review, and they found no difference between denepazil and placebo in the portion of people who withdrew for any cause. The answer is C. The side effects in randomized controlled trials were generally mild and transient, and a systematic review found no difference between denepazil and placebo in the proportion of people that withdrew from the study for any cause. And what's the reason behind this? Well, in a long-term open-label study of the efficacy and safety of denepazil for Alzheimer's disease, 86% of people taken denepazil, that's less than 10 milligrams, experience at least one adverse effect, often occurring later in the study. Common adverse effects include agitation, 24%, pain, 20%, insomnia, 11% of the patient, people, and diarrhea in 9%. Question 18. Which of the following treatments has been proven conclusively to improve cognitive symptoms of Alzheimer's disease? Is it A, vitamin E, B, NSAIDs, C, nicotine, or D, none of the above? The answer is D, none of the above. There were various studies done comparing treatment of vitamin E versus placebo, which found no significant difference in cognitive function with high doses of vitamin E alone for two years compared with placebo. Similar findings were found when testing with other variables mentioned in this test question. Question 19. Which of the following drug treatments for agitated behavior often associated with dementia is best supported by evidence? A. Trazodone, 
B. Sodium valproate, C. Carpansipine, or D. Dinepazel? The answer is C. Carpansipine. In a systematic review of relevant randomized controlled trials, it was found that carpansipine is likely to be beneficial, while trazodone, sodium valproate, and dinepazole are of unknown effectiveness in treating the agitation component of dementia. Question 20, last question. A 78-year-old man presents with gradual onset of cognitive impairment, which is fluctuating, together with falls, visual hallucinations, and Parkinsonism, what is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, multi-infarct dementia, B, Alzheimer's disease, or C, Lewy body dementia? The answer is C, Lewy body dementia. So, with Lewy body dementia, this involves an insidious impairment of executive function with Parkinsonosium, visual hallucinations, fluctuating cognitive abilities, and increased risk for falls or automatic failures. In a multi-infarct dementia, this will involve a stepwise deterioration in executive function with or without language or motor dysfunction. Patients usually have risk factors such as atherosclerosis, such as diabetes, hypertension, and smoking. It tends to have more of a sudden onset and a stepwise progression than Alzheimer's disease. Now, with Alzheimer's disease, you know, that's characterized by that insinuous, slow onset of deterioration. Congratulations, you've just done 20 questions on Alzheimer's disease. I hope you feel ready for your upcoming test. Good luck. And don't forget to share this with your other classmates so they too can be successful. Thanks. See you at the next video.